so much they'll do almost anything to make their marriage work. The question is, will this be the saddest story you've ever heard, or will this be proof positive that love really does conquer all? This is the story of Frank and Kristen Alioto. Frank and I were married in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. All of our friends and family came down, and we had a blast. It was a really good time. You are beautiful. Oh, thank you. I was thrilled to be marrying Frank. I couldn't stop shaking. I couldn't stop laughing. The experience was perfect. For better or for worse. As long as we both shall live. The party was starting to wind down, and Kristen and her bridesmaids were in a little part of the pool where you can kind of dance around. And I said, well, I'm going to go be with my wife. I jumped in the pool, and then I started floating. I just remember I couldn't move, and thinking to myself I was really in trouble. In an instant, he became a quadriplegic. Can you imagine what it would be like to spend your wedding evening in a hospital in Mexico, not knowing what's going to happen, whether your husband or wife would live or die? This is the experience that Frank and Kristen had. Ready to get up? No. Oh. OK. One, two, three. Frank and Kristen have been trapped in their house. Kristen's not had a single day where she could really be a wife. We're literally from day one, she's his nurse changing his catheter every few hours, living in fear, and then depression, because what happened to the life they planned? What happened to intimacy? What happened to this idea of kids or a future? When I see pictures of Frank and I, it doesn't look like Frank and I. It reminds me of two people that we knew once. And we don't know them anymore. Better? If I could have just walked around the pool, if I could have stayed there at the bar with my dad. I mean, there's so many what ifs. This is a tragedy, but out of tragedy, some good must come. Our job together is see if we can get Frank to discover. Thinking to myself, I have so many problems that Tony Robbins can't help me. So I want to know what you went through, where you really are today. And what is it you really want to do with your life at this stage? Today, we are trying to get back to life, as Frank calls it, our new reality. And it's just really difficult. I get up in the morning to eat a meal so I can take pills, so I can sit there and wait for the next meal and more pills. It's like, that's not living. Yeah. I think that I started grieving the life we were supposed to have. I tried to go back to work and manage the house and help Frank and grief. How did you do? How would you do all of that at once? I cry a lot. The thought of holding Kristen back makes me really sad. If I could give Kristen anything, I would be self-supportive so that she wouldn't constantly have to take care of me. I am grateful that she's my caretaker, but I don't want her to be my caretaker. I want her to be my life partner, my wife. And I don't want to wait that long to go from existing to living again. What was a, a dream for you before this happened? You know, most people have given themselves something to go after that's either fun or extraordinary or great. What would the dream been with you? start a family. Mm -hmm. I'd gotten my career to the point where I could start looking at the home life. Yeah. And that was kind of the next big step. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to race in the desert. Wow. And I was working on building myself a desert race truck. And uh, that was my dream. It was a real passion for you. Yeah. These two love each other completely, but no marriage can survive the kind of dynamic they're facing. We have to help them to find a way to break through. Really, we have two tasks here. One is, we've got to get Frank to restore his independence. On the other hand, I've got to get both to realize that in spite of this accident, they can still have an extraordinary quality of life. So tomorrow, I'm going to give you both a, a task. And it'll be a, an aggressive task. If you're scared about it, I, I will completely understand. But you've got to do it to continue the journey. So put your hands here if you would. I thought the challenge was getting to Fiji. I didn't know there was more to this. You up for it? Yes. OK.
Bula, good morning, it's Tony. Bula. Good morning, my friend, how are you? I'm very good, and yourself? Great, did you get a good night's sleep? Very good. Well, I've come by to give you your assignment. You guys okay. ready? Yep. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I promised you that you were gonna have to do things that you might think extremely difficult or impossible because you're starting a new journey. The last time you took off to a beautiful place together, you took a leap and it led to a lot of tragedy. So it seems only natural for you to begin this new journey with a leap of faith. So I've arranged one. Today, you're skydiving. Skydiving? Tony Robbins is insane. I'm just trying to rack my brain around this, and I can't get it. And since you're a couple, you'll be doing it as well. I am terrified to get thrown out of a plane, much less watch Frank get thrown out of a plane. He's quadriplegic. How is that possibly going to work? I know there's a part of you that must be thinking, OK, skydiving, if that's the first step, I can only imagine what step two and three are. But there's a method to my madness. It isn't just about, like, pushing you. It's really about how do you break through whatever unconscious concept we have about what's possible. All a breakthrough is is a moment in time when you get an insight or you see a truth or you have an experience that once it happens, it's like the veil disappears and you just take back control of your life. Not just today, but long term. And uh, we're looking for ways to trigger people to have those breakthroughs. Every day I know you wake up with some fears about this man and part of what we want to do is get you over those fears both by seeing him be stronger and also by you exercising your own muscles. That's what we're doing this thing for. But before I ask Kristen and Frank to skydive, I've got to first lay some groundwork and give them some tools so they can take that leap. They both need to experience the raw strength and power that's still inside them. I want you to think of a time when you feel crazy and angry. Give me an example and actually be there for a moment. Like transferring him from the wheelchair to the bed and I forget to take his glasses off and I heard his face could break the glasses. What do you say to yourself? What do you do with your body? Show me I what you do with your body as well. Instantly mad. Yes. And it makes me want to throw the glasses. So do in your body what you do when you're in that state, please. Go completely there just so you can see how it can be broken. You nod when you're just as angry and just as sad. Is it angry or sad or both? OK. Say out loud what you say in those moments. Say it out loud. I see the tears. I know it's real. We're, we're not doing it to hurt you. Go for it. For Kristen, her entire blueprint of life is to take care of everybody. But her greatest strength is now her weakness also because she can't do everything and still feel alive. She's trapped between anger and frustration and sadness and guilt, and she's in a prison. See what you see, feel what you feel, and then say it just the way you say it. Go. I'm so stupid. Say it again. Say it the way you say it, please. I'm so stupid. Say it with a volume you say it. I'm so stupid. Say to yourself in your own mind, Frank, what you normally say when that happens. I just wish I wouldn't hurt her. She shouldn't be upset because I can't take my glasses off. But here's what you need to do. Whenever she's in that place, instead of feeling sad and weak, you'd feel strong. And all she needs is your presence. The way you become present is you notice things you haven't been noticing before. Look at her. Look how horrible she feels. In this moment, in right this moment, he could take her from tears to feeling connected. And that's what she's starving for. And now he's starting to know, hey, I'm not helpless. Suddenly he starts feeling like, wow, I can really be her man. I can show up and I can make a difference. And that's the beginning of changing their relationship. It's OK, baby. It's OK. I promise. OK. I love you. I love you too, baby. Oh my god, that works. Remember that one. Look at that. <laughs> Lights up like a Christmas tree. We went from crying and angry and beating ourselves off to greeting from ear to ear. And how long did that take? Not long. Being able to provide Kristen with an emotional shoulder to lean on was very powerful. It was important for me to understand that I can still be there for her and provide her with strength. That's the beginning of a breakthrough. Our job now is to improve upon that on our second challenge, skydiving, which is going to be aggressive. But I think we'll provide even more of what they need. It'll provide the next step. When you break through that fear and you're out there, 
You ain't gonna be thinking about the past. You ain't gonna be thinking about the future. You are not gonna be worried about him in the next room or no. whether he can manage things. This is gonna create a bit of a contrast for what your man is truly capable of. Yes. And it's also gonna be something I think at the end that'll be quite euphoric for you all, both in the sense of accomplishment and freedom. The feeling to be able to fly is incredible. We'll see you in a bit. Thank you. Okay. Oh my goodness, I'm terrified. It'll be okay, baby, I promise. Perfect day for skydiving. <laughs> yes. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. You see this man and woman, they're in such pain. So I want them to create a greater sense of freedom. And that freedom's only gonna come if Kristen can see Frank as strong mentally, emotionally, and physically. And if Frank can realize that life can be rich regardless of what's happened to us on the outside. Better? Yeah, we're good. All right? Okay. You okay? I'm doing fine, baby. We're gonna be okay. All right, buddy. Now I'm nervous. <laughs> okay, good. That's our man. It's okay to feel that. <laughs> so you guys, I'll see you in a few minutes on the ground. Just remember what this is, a brand new life, a jump into the new life. We'll celebrate with you on the ground, all right? Okay. God bless. Strapped to another man who's loosely strapped to the helicopter. My foot is mere inches from the open doorway. This is not where I want to be. All right, Frank, we're about ready. Anything you want to say? What is the most terrifying moment of my life goes to extremely powerful. It was the freest I'd felt since being told I was paralyzed. Not only do this, but really, really enjoy it. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. How was that? Crazy. Crazy. Okay, here he comes. This is Frank. There he is. How you doing, brother? That's awesome. That's incredible. Oh, you look incredible. Are you okay, baby? I'm so happy when I saw you, man. I love you so much. Come here. Give me a hug. No, I just want to help you get unstrapped. <laughs> right now, more than ever, I feel like a wife. Frank has been able to support me going through this. He was able to be the strong one in the relationship versus me being the strong one. He took care of me. You look like you're relaxing. Can I sneak in right now? Sure. Absolutely. Pull up a chair. Yeah, we're just enjoying the evening. It's a beautiful night. Oh, I'm glad. Yes. What did the skydive mean for you today? I'm just curious. It really did mean that we could do things. I've been afraid that we're, I'm just going to stay at home and, yeah. and not kind of have the adventurous lifestyle we used to. And it's still possible. I thought getting to Fiji meant we could do anything. Yeah. This definitely was it. Well, good, because I'm going to be offering something oh, new. <laughs> so I'm here to deliver the next step in the journey. OK. And um, the next step is going to be very challenging in a different way for you. And all I'm going to give you is a card. And on this card is an address and a time and a date. And I'm going to ask you just to show up there. And it has some danger involved in it. There's no question there's danger and there's risk. And I'm going to be giving you a different card with a different address. And the reason you'll be going on it separately is right now you both have some needs that need to be met. When you're together, you love each other so damn much that you don't take care of your own needs. That's the next step in this task. They've never been apart since the night of the accident. It's going to be tough as heck, but I think it's what they both really need right now. And when they come back together, it'll be even more powerful, even more deep, and even more euphoric. I look at Kristen, and she's crying. I want to tell him, the hell with it. I'm going home. And then I start thinking about the skydive. That turned out pretty good. Are you up for it? Yes. Are you up for that? I'm going to trust you.
And then the journey begins. Currently, I am in Oceanside, California for my newest challenge. I'm terrified. I don't know what to expect. I don't know how to exist right now without Kristen. I don't know if I'm going to make it through Tony's challenge. Frank's going to get physical here. He's going to find out how strong he really is, and he's not fragile. So I go into this gym, and there's wheelchairs crashing into each other. People are throwing balls at each other, and I'm kind of like, what is this? I'm clearly not in the right place. Right. I'm Andy. It's Andy. Andy. It's going uh, good. Ready for your first day? These are some of my murder ball teammates, and um, we just want to welcome you and invite you to be part of our team. This will be your chair of the day. We're going to go ahead and get you in it and get you going. I can barely move in my wheelchair, and you guys want me to go out in a manual chair. It's just kind of a surprise. Do I look cool? Hey, you look like a rugby player. You know, murder ball sounds so horrible. It's really rugby for quadriplegics, and these are incredible athletes. Frank isn't. This guy's haul ass. But I think you're going to see another level of breakthrough of him seeing just how strong and how tough he is. And I'm going to have him roommate with uh, a man named Andy, who's an Olympic champion, and just one of those guys that will not accept limitations in their lives. Everybody, 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 everybody. 15, So it's going to provide some new possibilities, not by telling him, but by having him experience it. And again, that's my belief. Instead of trying to tell somebody, give them an experience, and then it's true for them. Go, Frank, go. Go, Frank, go. Good job, everybody. Nice job. Everybody grab water. These guys are flying around in circles. I can barely keep my head turning fast enough to watch. What have I gotten myself into? What have they got me into? One of the best things about this is I see you out here pushing really hard. Don't give up. These guys out here, they didn't push any better than you are right now. Every one of these guys was in a similar situation like you. And you just don't quit. Thank you. Don't give up. Oh. <laughs> Frank doesn't realize but he's going to go from not knowing anything about the sport to actually being in a real game and discovering what he's really capable of. How you feeling? Ah. Dude, for first day, that was yeah. awesome. You came out here and you just kind of went with the flow. You didn't know, you know, we're throwing a lot at you. You're making the hits and just having a good time, it looked like. So you exceeded everybody's expectations. Indeed. Yeah. Thank you. Just keep having fun. Right. I knew the hardest thing in the world was going to be to say, OK, here's your next task. It's going to be you guys being apart. But I think what Kristen really needs is some time for herself where she isn't there every moment taking care of Frank for both her own benefit and also have her separate so see he can exist without her. That's a little scary. Got to be scary to Kristen. Inhale, expand. Exhale, surrender right here. Tony showed me that I need to grieve and I need to be affected by the situation. And now he's helping me see that it's OK to enjoy myself. Excellent. Yes. Well done. These are my favorite rugby prizes. Uh, this is the gold medal that we got in Beijing from the Paralympics with the USA team. And then my wife is eight and a half months pregnant. This is my favorite picture of him so far, even though he's not even out yet. But you can see him. He's the size of a blueberry right there. Just a little black dot. As I keep that up like, from the mantle here. When Andy told me that his wife was pregnant, instantly things started rushing through my mind, like how, why. Hi. Hi I'll give you a hug. You? Sorry about my belly. Sure. And then in comes Mandy, his wife, and she's ready to pop at a moment's notice. And it really kind of changes your perspective on what's possible. Family is one of my big things for the future. But for my wife to have to deal with a baby and deal with me when I'm not. You know, I don't feel like you should short anything in your life because you're in a chair. And um, you know, a kid's just part of that. And what a kid wants more than anything is your love and attention. And you know, we can give that as good as anybody. Definitely. So. Well, I think also you look at it as 
There's not limitations. I don't like the word limitations, but you make modifications. And to think that it, it couldn't happen or it maybe shouldn't happen, I think it's almost ridiculous because no one's perfect. I mean, you're not, we're not, no one is. And we just started trying and we were fortunate to, you know, to end up right here. <laughs> Knowing that there were still possibilities and I can still have a family made me feel that things are, are definitely looking up. Frank's been practicing now for a week, but this is a real game. This is gonna be the real test. Now we're gonna find out what he's really made of. And Frank doesn't know this, but I'm gonna surprise him and bring Kristen and his family to watch. Just kind of do that same thing we showed you in practice where you're battling down low, try and tie it up, try to work the ball to you a little bit, give it back to the inbounder and move up the court. Okay? The murder ball game is gonna happen. I don't know what these guys are thinking. I'm just gonna be in sheer terror. So I called Kristen up. I said, it's time to be with your man again. And she gets that little shriek, right? And I said, why don't you meet me down in Oceanside? Well, howdy, stranger. It's so nice to see you. Mwah. Now, you know, um, when we first did this process, I didn't separate you guys uh, willy-nilly. But I want to free you from thinking of him as if he's a piece of glass. OK. Because he's not. No. And he's going to show you that by his own experience of what he's done in the last 10 days. I missed Frank incredibly. I just wanted to see him and hold him and have him kiss me. Ball's in, ball's in. Ball up, Frank. Good job, Frank. Good job, Frank. Good try, Frank. Good try, Frank. Oh. Hey, Frank. Hey, baby. What the heck are you doing? I'm getting hit a lot. <laughs> you look like you're getting hit a lot. <laughs> I thought going to Fiji was crazy. Then I thought jumping out of a plane was crazy. Now Frank playing quad rugby, that's just absolutely insane. I can't believe you're doing this. It'll be fun. So there's some other people that are here also to watch you play murder ball. Aaron, your best man is here. And so are your parents. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Dad. Hi, honey. Good to see you. Hi, Mom. Love you. Mom, what do you think of this? I'm flabbergasted. I'm flabbergasted. You guys ready? Oh my gosh, my heart's beating so fast. All right, let's play some murder ball. Go. Back to ball, right? Back to ball. Oh, oh, I do not love it. Your last. Go, 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 go. Side by side by side by. Wow. I was really scared for Frank. I thought, what the heck is he doing out there? But he had a big smile on his face, and he was chasing that ball, and he was having a good time. This is something he wouldn't have done before. You got Paul coming right, Frank. Yeah. Good job, Frank. There's Frank out there in the middle of this game, pumping down here like crazy. Keep working into the mix. Great job, Frank. He did it all with Will, and he really just expanded everybody's mind about what Frank was capable of. Is he stronger than the man who was in the room who wouldn't leave the house? Yes. He's incredibly strong. I'm incredibly proud of him. Push, Frank, push! At the end of the game, we brought all the family and friends together. And, you know, hearing everyone's perspective about how proud they were of Frank and how incredible and how they didn't think he could do any of these things, it was inspiring. Just Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely awesome. I'm so proud of you. What an incredible experience, incredible performance. As family, one of the most important things besides cheering him on is to realize that so often out of our love with someone, we don't want him to struggle. And sometimes the worst thing we can do for those we love is the things that they could or should do for themselves. And then we end up becoming the handicap. The best thing you can do for Frank sometimes is to let him struggle. 
And it sounds funny, but we've let him struggle, and then he figures a way out, and then that's not a struggle anymore. So you're playing the role loving wife, sometimes best by maybe turning your back and leaving the room oh and gosh. let Frank figure it out for himself, because he can do it. I can see I should, yes. and I'll promise to work on it. <laughs> so then what comes next is the dreams you had before this happened. I was dreaming about my uh, a race truck. Before I got hurt, my dream was to take this old truck I had bought for almost nothing and take it to a couple desert races and just do something that I had dreamed of since I was a little kid. But uh, I know I'll never drive that truck, and I know that truck won't get done. Where is your race truck? San Luis Obispo. In pieces? <laughs> a million pieces. No, it's not. It's at home waiting for you in your garage. And when you get home, your friends and family, your best man here, Aaron, are all going to work with you to rebuild. And then I'm going to meet you in the desert, and you're going to drive the son of a gun. I'm going to be in the right seat, so you better do a damn good job. That is the next step. It made me nervous. I've been in plenty of vehicles with Frank where the brakes went out, or we lost something, and I don't know what punctured an oil pan, and we had to jump out of it. Should I be concerned sitting in the right seat? Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 You are going to have a helmet, Frank. <laughs> Yeah, I'm ready as I'll ever be. It's good for all of us to remember that no matter what external limitation there may be out there in our lives, that most of the things that we want to really accomplish, we can still accomplish with good friends, hard work, and some ingenuity. Wow. Wow. <laughs> this isn't just about building Frank's truck. This is about Frank realizing that he never has to give up on his dreams. get new brake hoses. What is that, about an eight inch or a 10 inch? Oh, look, he's already got your hand controls figured out. You got to wait eight more years, though. <laughs> we're currently in the garage. We're putting gas in the truck, and we're about to fire her up. She hasn't run in probably a year and a half. We'll see if she fires. This could be a really big thing if she doesn't. Can you give it a little throttle with the hand throttle? Just push it down. It's alive. Put your hands on my wrists, one on each wrist. So, so on one. Yeah. OK, go. I had mixed emotions when I saw Frank get into his truck for the first time. I was nervous, but also excited for him to get the feel of sitting in the seat holding the steering wheel. And you couldn't have taken that smile off his face. <laughs> and I was so happy for him. All my fears went away, and it was just pure excitement like Christmas morning for him. I'm in my truck. I didn't think it'd ever get done. I never thought I'd drive my truck again. I'm ecstatic. This is going to happen, and it's going to happen now. I think that'll work. This really is a dream come true. It's pretty awesome. Today's the day. On the surface, you could say Frank had to go through more physical breakthroughs. But honestly, any breakthrough you're going to have in your life starts with a change in your beliefs. <laughs> Promise me you haven't taken this out yet. I have not taken it out yet. Ready to rock? I'm ready. OK, let's do it. One way to change your belief is try to work on your head. The other way is just experience something that destroys your old belief system. After you've done it, your brain goes, I can't have that limiting belief because I've done it. I love you. <laughs> All right, ready, big man? Ready. Let's rock. Oh. Let me give you some advice. Please. Push your feet into the floor when you see a bump coming up. Okay. Feel free to grab the roll bar tube underneath that pad okay. in case something does go wrong. Show me what you got, Frank.
I'm really nervous about driving the truck, and you know, I was like, just don't crash, just don't crash, just don't crash. I felt like I could walk on water right then. It was such a powerful moment that I can't really put it into words. Look at this. You're in your damn truck. I've always believed that there are highs and lows in life. My accident was an extremely low point, and this is the part where things start to go back up. Thank you, buddy. That was a blast. No problem. That was a blast just felt so incredible to think this is the same man who felt like he was completely trapped and couldn't leave his house. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> well, you did it. You both did it. How do you feel about your man right now? Here he is. Look at him. <laughs> I think he's amazing in every single way. I'm so proud of him. Well, we're all proud of you. All of us are very we proud of you. Today. Uh, I do have one more big surprise for you. <laughs> oh, no. All your family and friends feel bad about how your first wedding happened. So your family or friends are right here, right now. invited Frank and Kristen to the Wadsworth Theater as the last step in the journey. They've had such transformation, the final piece is really more of a celebration and a chance for them to kind of pay it forward a little bit. And also I had a surprise waiting for them that you need a large group to pull off. And I want to thank you all for coming here tonight. We're here to celebrate two people's lives who are extremely special to me. And this couple had an experience that probably is extreme by anybody's standards. The best day of their life, the happiest day of their life, their wedding day, became the most tragic day of their life. But my own personal belief is your story is not where you start, it's where you take it to. I'd like you to please give an amazing, warm welcome to Frank and Kristen. It's a very surreal thing to look around the auditorium and see so many people. I just keep looking at Frank and saying, what is going on? What is going on? This journey of yours has been quite amazing. You've made such huge changes and transformations, both of you. What's happened? What's real now? What's possible now? We went through all these adventures, and I got to do a lot of things I never thought I'd do again. I can't imagine anything holding us back anymore. Wow, that's awesome. So all your family and friends feel bad about how your first wedding happened and wanted to kind of erase that memory and provide a new one. And they feel like you got a new life, so you should have a new wedding. Curtains opened and our bridal party came down. Hi. Everyone that was there with us that day was with us again, assembled in one place. And we had a dream win again. This is Pastor Aunt Carla. She's the person who married them the first time. And we have on stage the entire wedding party that was there in Mexico. And with that, Aunt, will you take over? Kristen, we invite you in this moment to tell Frank how you feel about him now and how you feel about your future together. I love you more today than ever. I don't know what the future holds, but I'm ready for it. I love you, and I'm amazed every day at your strength and how you hold together 
I just know we'll be together forever. It is my real joy to pronounce you once again, husband and wife, Frank and Kristen Alioto. <laughs> When I first heard that word quadriplegic, I couldn't imagine anything going right again. I really just want to say thank you to Tony. You can't put into words a thank you deep enough and it's significant enough. It's a love story for me. It's about two people that went through hell together, but their love for each other kept them going. They could have easily pulled apart. We're all going to face challenges, and Frank and Kristen are just beautiful examples of what the human spirit can do with some courage and some faith and, and some will. If I could go back in time to the moment in the pool, I would tell myself it's going to be okay. Everything will be okay. Because everything is okay.